After this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So there's something about this that just absolutely speaks to the human soul. And folks, I want to be spoken to, don't you? Don't you get tired of superficial fluff? Don't you get tired of religious, uh, religious, uh, uh, just, uh, just a warmed over religious cliches that had no power or meaning? And so the Lord said here in Matthew, when you pray, pray thusly, our Father. And my friend, I say to you, our Father, what a thing. So do you call Him Father? Do you call Him Father because somebody told you to call Him Father? That's not worth a dime. But if you call Him Father because He is your Father, that tells you what's going on inside your soul. And I call Him Father because He's my Father. Say, when did He become your Father? I thought God's the Father of all. No, He's only the Father of those that He begets, that are His children. So what's that, preacher? That's the new birth. That's to be born of God. John chapter number 3, Nicodemus. Ye must be born again. So my Father, our Father, which art in heaven. Heaven is the abode of God for man, for his creation, not for God. God abided forever in a place there is nothing but God. From everlasting to everlasting. But he has a heaven. Over there in Psalm chapter number 73, Asaph. Asaph said, I was, he said, I was weary. He said, I was bothered by the, by, by, the, by the prosperity of the wicked. He said, it began to eat at my soul because I saw how the wicked lived. They prospered until I went into the sanctuary of God. And then he said, I saw their end. And from that day on, he no longer fancied the wicked. He no longer thought how great it was to live like they lived. From that day on, he pitied them. Because he knew what was waiting for them. It is waiting for you. Somewhere out there, there's a door that you've got to go through that is the end of your life. You're going to have to go through it. What's on the other side? Tell me, my dear friend, you that you, some, some of you may be smart, Alex, and say, oh, there's nothing out there. Oh, you really know that, do you? What do you base that on? You ever been over there and come back to tell us about it? You don't know what's over there, but I know what the Bible says. I know what happened in the book of Luke 16 when the rich man died and was buried. There's his body. Then in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. Don't you think that to be a horrible thing when the day comes and all of your lies, all of your deception, all of your trickery, all of your deceit, all of your foolishness, all of your science, all of your gods, all of that stuff fails you? And you come to your senses in a lake of fire? Asaph said, until I saw their end. Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Oh, blessed be that name. Does that name excite you? Was that the name you cried out when you read the scripture or somebody prayed with you? Or you got on your knees and you said, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I need to be saved. I'm lost without God. Jesus, come into my heart and into my soul. And he did. And from that day on, Jesus became the sweetest name you knew. You wanted to talk about Him. You wanted to sing about Him. You wanted to read about Him. You wanted to talk to Him. He was precious to you. And every time you ever heard His name, blackguarded or run down or cursed or something like that, it upset you because He is your Lord and your Savior. The thing that makes a Christian a Christian is Christ. And without Him, it's just a word. Jesus. Call Him Jesus. 
for he shall save his people from their sins. The Greek word Jesus is translated into English Jesus and Jesus in English is the Old Testament Jehovah and that is the covenant keeping God which means God saves, Jehovah saves, the Savior, the Savior, the Salvation One, and He is the Savior. And friend, if you've ever been saved, you'll say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What happens in your life if some tragedy comes or something happens that you can't control? That's life, that's the earth, that's what we're living in. This is all the hell you'll ever know. Aren't you glad for that? You're looking at it right now. But what happens to you when something goes awry? Do you begin to cry in the name of Jesus and take it in vain and stomping under your feet and make fun of Him and say, well, if this is what it is to be a Christian, I want no part of it. Let me tell you what it is to be a Christian. It's not what you do. It's who you know. Once you know Him, you will always know Him. He'll be within you a well of water of life springing up into everlasting life. He'll be the spirit of the living God permeating your soul, animating your life and giving you life from within. It comes from the within, friend. If you've ever been born of the Spirit of God, there's something greater in you than is in this world. You don't need their outside stimulus. Our Father, which art in heaven, how would be thy name? Isn't that wonderful? Our Father which art in heaven, how would be thy name? Isn't that marvelous? Let's look at the Bible. Matthew chapter number 6. Our Father which art in heaven, how would be thy name? Verse 10. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You're constantly praying for something and someone to come down here because it's not getting any better. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our weekly bread. I messed up, didn't I? I'm glad you caught me. What's it say? Our daily bread. Amen. The manna came every day. What's that mean, preacher? It means God wants you to count on Him to feed you every day. Amen. Well, the government will take care of me. Oh, my goodness gracious. You think the government's going to take care of you, do you? <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you who will take care of you. The Lord will take care of you. The Lord will take care of you. He'll take care of you. Now watch verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, boy. Say, preacher, I wish that wasn't in there. I know a lot of people do. You just don't know what so-and-so said about me or did to me. I understand. I understand all about it. I know human nature. Been acquainted with it now for a few decades. Well, preacher, I'll tell you what. I'm going to live for God, but that's one thing I can't do. Well, you're really not going to live for God. Because you're going to have something that's like an albatross around your neck. It's going to haunt you. It's going to follow you. It's going to beat you to death. You got to be able to forgive. Notice he didn't say forget, he just said forgive. Forgetting's another issue. Amen. If you got a brain like mine, you can forget. Amen. God's blessed me with a terrible memory. Hallelujah to God. Can't remember anything. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> but forgive is a choice you make. Amen. You'll know you're growing in grace in the Lord when you can walk up and take hold of a man or a woman's hand and shake hands with them and look them eyeball to eyeball and tell them you love them in the Lord and you can fellowship with them and you can praise God and you know they treated you like a dog, but you can still do it. Well, you know, I've watched stuff that literally blew my mind. I watched a man cast a demon out of a girl. And as he was casting that demon out of that girl, he started talking to that demon. And he said to that demon, what's your legal ground? So what are you talking about? That demon had a legal ground that it had bound itself to. In other words, don't give place to the devil. She'd given him a place. That demon had latched onto it. Why that preacher? Why is that even possible? 
You want me to explain it to you? The kingdoms of this world right now are under the control of the God of this world. He has authority in this world. Believe me, he does. His demons have authority. And when they come into a person's life, it's because you open the door to let them in. The Lord said, I stand at the door and knock. You opened the door and they came in. You can do it with a Ouija board. You can do it with Charlie Charlie. You can do it with, with the sins of the flesh. You can do it through a, a drugs, a lot music, a lot of things. Wrong doctrine. And they come in. And once they come in, they don't give up their territory easily. There's got to be one stronger than them to get them out. And here's the key, here's the key to it. Here's the key. Your will, your will, are you willing to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to cleanse you, purge you, you don't have to confess to a person in this building what you've done this past week. You confess it to God. Don't tell a man what you've done. He'll use it on you later. You confess it to God alone. He'll never use it on you. It's cleansed and it's gone. So I watched him. Man, a battle ensued. And then finally this man who... They call him an exorcist. Said in the name of Jesus Christ, you have no more authority over this girl. You come out of her right now. In his name, I plead the blood covenant against you. Come out of her. And you know what happened? A howling, screeching, grinding, moaning. And then she fell back as if she had been released. Or something had released itself from her. And she appeared to have peace. I don't know what happened later or how far it went. Like I say to you, I am not an exorcist, but I use that to make a point. Satan has authority. If you give him place in your life, he will take authority in your life. And the only one that can get him out of your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. But you've got a door you can open and you have a will that's yours. And that will is a sovereign, precious thing. Do you have it? Who have you given your life to today? Who, what, what have you done with your will? Have you chosen him? Have you, are you living for him? That's my prayer and my question. Have you done that? This may be the last time you ever see my face. I may leave this world today. I'm not, I don't go around with a morbid thought about I'm going to die at any moment. But I've been here too long. Not to understand that at any minute would be my last minute on planet earth. And I know whom I have believed. I know him.